I'm going to work on showing you how to simplify the square root of each and every number under 100. Now, again, those are at least the numbers that you can simplify the square root of. So let's go ahead and get started. And I'm just going to kind of show you the way that I think through these problems. So therefore, we can do this rather quickly. So the first one is going to be a square number. So that one's going to be rather easy. So the square root of 4 is just going to be a 2. Uh, the next one, what I want to do is square root of 8. I want to rewrite this in terms of square numbers. So uh, remember, 4 is a square number, right? Because you can take the square root of 4. So I notice that 8 can be rewritten here as a square root of 4 times 2. Now what I recognize here is I can take the square root of 4, which is going to be a 2, times the square root of 2. Now the next square number that we're going to have here is the square root of 9, which is going to give us a um, 3. So I'm just going to write 9 is going to be another square number. Now 12, let's say that's not a square number. Uh, I can't take the square root of 12, but can I rewrite that as a product of my two square numbers over here? And yeah, you could say that's going to be a 4 times 3. So therefore I can say now this is going to be a 4 times 3. I can take the square root of 4, which is now going to lead me to a 2 square root of 3. The next one here, hopefully you recognize that as a square number, that is going to be a 4. So that is going to be the next square number that I'm going to um, write out. Um, then the next one, 8, we would say, all right, which of these square numbers can I rewrite that as a product? And you could see that hopefully that is going to be a 9 times 3. Square root of 9 is going to be a 3, square root of 3. Square root of 20, I can rewrite that as a square root of 4 times five. Now, the one thing I want you to notice is I'm always trying to write this square number first. You don't have to do that, but in my opinion, I like to kind of always try to try to do that first just to try to remain consistent. So the square root of four is going to be a two square root of five. For the square root of 24, uh, let's see, that looks like that's going to be a four times six. So I can rewrite that as a four times six, and therefore that's going to be a two square root of six. The square root of 25, that's going to be another square number. So that's going to be 5. So I'll say, all right, that's another square number here, 25. For 27, um, notice a lot of times when they end in odd, you're going to be thinking of the 9, right? Because 9 is my odd square number here. So therefore, I can rewrite that as a square root of 9 times 3. I can take the square root of 9, right? Because it's a square number. So therefore, that's going to be a 3 square root of 3. Uh, for 28, looks like that's going to be a 4 times a 7, right? So 4 times 7. Square root of 4 is going to be a 2. And then I just have to leave the square root of 7 under the radical, right? Because you can't do anything with it. So you, therefore, you have to leave it there. Uh, for the next one here, we have, again, one thing you could say, well, this is 4 times 8, right? But you could also say this is 16 times 2. So which one do you choose? Well, technically, you can get to the right answer choosing both. But what I always like to do, or the way that I tell my students, is always choose the largest square number to rewrite as your product. So rather than doing 4 times 8, I'm going to write this as a 16 times 2. The square root of 16 is going to be a 4 square root of 2. It just makes life a little bit easier, and so therefore you don't have to do as much work. Square root of 36 is a square number. That's going to be 6, so I'll go ahead and list this over here. Um, square root of 40 looks like that can be a um, square root of 4 times 10, right? You can just rewrite it in that regard. Then I could take the square root of 4 and the square root of 10, so therefore it's giving me 2. Square root of 10 is my final answer. Uh, for 44, it looks like I could do a 4 times 11. The square root of 4 is going to be 2. And then we have 11. You can see we're using 4 quite a bit, right? <laughs> so again, as you get through this, like the better and better you're going to get. Uh, let's see, 45. I think that's an odd number. That makes me think of three or of 9. And indeed, that is going to work. It's going to be a 9 or non, a 9 times 5. The square root of 9 is going to be a 3 times the square root of 5. Uh, 48, again, initially I think of 4, right, because it, it ends in an 8, but then I also think, is there a larger number, right? And again, sometimes you can work your way backwards, like 36, no, that doesn't go. 25, no. 16, ah, 16 does work, right? So again, sometimes you might have that initial thing like, oh, 4 is usually going to go into it, but is there a number higher than 4, a square number that evenly divides into that? In this case, we do have, we have a 16 times a 3. Square root of 16 is going to be a 4 times square root of 3. Here, 25, um, I know is going to 50, or I can rewrite that as a 25 um, times 2. Square root of 25 is going to be a 5 square root of 2. And then for this one here, now, this one you can start kind of taking with like number 19. What you can do is like start thinking of this as like dividing it by 2, right? That's an even number. So if you divide it by 2, right, that's going to be a 26. Divide it by 2 again. Um, that's going to be a 13. Oh, 13 times four, right? Because you divided it by two, which is technically divided it by two twice, which is kind of like dividing it by four. So even if you don't know initially, like how many times is four going to 52? Just keep on dividing it by two. That's And then you'll see like, oh, two, it went divided by two twice was the same thing as divided by four. So therefore I can rewrite this as a four times a 13. And square root of four is going to be a two times a square root of 13. Uh, next one over here, this one's even. But again, hopefully you recognize, you know, your multiples of nine, you recognize, oh, this would be nine times a six. So I have a nine times six. Um, so therefore, that's going to be a three square root of six. 
Okay, um, again, the same thing I'm going to do over here. Uh, I'm going to divide this. Um, like, say, if you divide this by 2, that is going to be a 28. Divided by 2 again, that's going to be a 14, right? Um, and 14 cannot be simplified any further. There's no other square numbers that you can divide into um, a 14. So, therefore, that is going to be the next one. So, let's see. I can rewrite that as a 4 times a 14. Square root of 4 is going to be a 2. Square root of a 14. Um, again, 15. Hopefully, you recognize 15 60. Um, or, or, I'm sorry going again through this, I recognize that 15 divided by 30 divided by two again is going to be 15. So therefore I can rewrite this as a four times a 15. And square root of four is going to be two times the square root of 15. Now here I recognize an odd and I say, oh yeah, nine does nine go into 63? Oh yeah, seven times, right? Or yeah, seven times. So therefore I can rewrite this as a nine times a seven. Square root of nine is going to be a three. Square root of seven. Um, did I miss a couple? I think I did. 36. Where did I get to? Oh my God, I did forget 49. Holy crap. Let's go ahead and do it. I was wondering about that. I'm like, where did 49 go? So I forgot to type that in. Shoot. Okay, well, let's go ahead and add 49 then. There's a 49 that goes into there, guys. So square root of 49, I must have missed that square number. So we have 36 and we have 49, which is another square number, right? Because um, let me go ahead and write that up there. Um, square root of 49. Is going to equal seven. So I will update the sheet for those of you that are following along from that. I can't believe I forgot about that. Um, all right. So and then we have square root of 64, which is going to be an eight. Um, and then let's go and get into, okay. So now we have 25, which is going to be a 68. Okay. So again, we divide by two, um, it's 34 divided by two. Again, it's going to be a 17. So you could say, all right, so that's a four times a 17. Square root of four is going to be a two times the square root of 17. Here, I recognize, um, again, divided by two is a 36, right? Oh, 36 is a square number. So I can rewrite this here as a 36 times two. A lot of people might say, oh, can't you do nine times eight? Yes, of course you can, right? But again, guys, our goal is to do the largest number, largest square number that evenly divides into that term. Um, so therefore, we have a um, 36. Well, that's going to be a six times the square root of two. Here, I recognize a ends in a five, 75, 25 goes into there three times. So I can rewrite this as a 25 times three. Square root of 25 is going to be a five times a square root of um, three. And then this one, I'm going to divide out. Um, I'm not sure what 76 starts to get big numbers, right? But I know it's even, so I can divide it by two. Um, divide it by two, that's going to give me a 38. Uh, divide that by two again, that's going to be a 19. I'd say, oh, okay. So I can rewrite this as a four times, oh, let me just fix that up. So this could be a four times a 19. There you go. And the square root of four is going to be a two times a square root of 19. All right, now let's go and get into our 80, which is going to be, um, let's see here. So thinking of 80, um, I recognize that, let's see here. And now I know four is gonna go into there 20 times, right? But then I can reduce the square root of 20 Right? If I think about square root of 20, that's going to be um, a 2 times 5. So that'd be already you're going to be multiplying this. Um, so then the 2 times 4, which is going to give you, or 2 times um, 2, which would give you 4. So I'm actually going to give a final answer is 4 times square root of 5. But let's see, that means what this is. So I'm kind of doing my mental math in my head. This can be rewritten as 6. How many times is 5 going to there? Well, that's going to be 5 goes into 50 10 times. And then it's going to go in there 4 times. Um, yeah, 10 times, and then, I'm sorry, there's an extra 30, so that'd be six. There you go. So 16 times five, doing some mental math in my head. <laughs> Don't bother me. Square root of 16 is going to be a four, square root of five. I'm sure none of you have tried, like, doing all of these problems all at once. Like, it's such a great idea. Um, oh, man. Okay. Ooh, and the next square number. Why do I keep on forgetting? So we have 64. That was the square root of eight. I forgot to write that in there. Sorry about that. Then the next one, we have nine, right? So square root of 81 is going to be a nine. So that's going to be 81, which is our next square number. Um, then we have our 84. So, okay, so let's divide that by two. Um, that's going to be a 42. Divide that by two again, that's going to be a 21. So therefore, I can get that as to a four times a 21. Square root of four is going to be a two times a square root of 21. 
Then we have a 32. Um, again, we can do the same thing. Divided by 2 is going to be a 44. Divided by 2 again is going to be a 22, right? So therefore, I can do a 4 times a 22. So notice if I don't know exactly if there's already a bigger number that knows in, even, evenly into it, I kind of work with my prime factorization to divide it by 2 um, to kind of see what is going to work. And a lot of times, if anything else doesn't work from that case, then I'll just you know divide by 2 in that case to see what I can do. Um, all right, so nine times 10, well, I know nine, obviously 90, so that one's gonna be a nine times 10. Square root of nine is going to be a three, square root of 10. Um, now this one could be a little bit of interest in here. So um, it's even, right? So let's see, that would be a 46, and then if I divided 46 again, that'd be a 23. So again, I'm just dividing by two twice, which is technically divided by four. So therefore I can say that's the same thing as a four times the square root of 23. Um, oops, I'm sorry. Let me fix that correctly. You're really writing it under the radical as a four times a 23. And then square root of four is going to be a two times the square root of 23. All right. Now we have our 96, um, which again, I'm thinking into this one, like I don't think I need to divide by four. 96 sounds like a pretty common number. And again, if I'm thinking about 96, um, that was already half, right, of 48. And I know 48 can be divisible here. So what I'm looking into is saying, all right, well, that's going to be, what else can I simplify there? So that one 16 went into there three times. So if it's now double, that means this could be written as 16 times a three times, right? So therefore I can read, I'm sorry, 16 times six. So therefore I can write this as 16 times six. Square root of 16 is going to be a four. Square root of six. Um, 98. Hmm. Uh, let's go and see if we can do a square number here. Da -da -da. Hmm, what if I double 49 die two, right? That's getting to be 98. So that one's kind of actually easy. So therefore I can rewrite this as a 49. Ah, come on, write your 49s correctly. So this will be a 49 times two. Square root of 49 is going to be a seven. Square root of two. Um, and 99, that's going to be nine times 11. That one's kind of easy. So this one would be a um, square root of nine times 11. Square root of nine is going to be a three times square root of 11. And then we have last but not least, guys, is the last square number under 100 or at least over 100 with equal to 100, which is going to be a 10. So therefore, ladies.